Believe it or not, Pokemon was sued for the equivalent of 60 million pounds back in 1999. Because of the serious nature of the lawsuit, both the anime and the trading card game have been impacted and forever changed, and still, to this day, the situation has not been rectified. Hello out there BulbaTube fans, my name is Eric, formerly known as Professor Bulba, and today I'm going to give you the interesting details of this lawsuit against Pokemon. First, I'll explain who, when, why, and how. Finally, I'll explain how the lawsuit forever changed the anime and the trading card game. The year was 1999. Pokemon has been a growing hot topic over the last three years since its original release back in 1996. Several months later came the trading card game. The anime soon followed in April 1997 for Japan and September 8, 1998 for English viewers. Things were looking great for Game Freak, the developers of Pokemon. Their next installment of the game, Pokemon Gold and Silver, were in development and to be released in Japan for November 21st, 1999. And for North America slash Australia, mid-October of 2000. Things were foreseeably good. I say that facetiously because little did Nintendo know a real-life self-acclaimed psychic was about to come across something that would forever change Pokemon. December 1999. A well-known psychic at the time was in Tokyo, Japan doing Christmas shopping. He found himself quite surprised that his fame was so well-known in the mall he was at where people would bow to him and take pictures. What he didn't know, quite yet, is the real reason behind it. The suspense is killing me. Tell us already. Said psychic was Uri Geller, a Israeli-British who was a well-known self-proclaimed psychic back in the height of his career in the late 1970s. Enter Mr. Geller into a Pokemon Center. No, no, not a real Pokemon Center. <laughs> Enter Mr. Geller into an exclusively Pokemon store known as a Pokemon Center. Before he knew it, allegedly hundreds of children surrounded him, sticking out Pokemon cards chanting what sounded like Uri Geller, begging for his autograph. On further inspection, Uri Geller saw that the card was, in fact, what English speakers know as Kadabra. What does any of this have to do with the lawsuit? You may be asking yourself. Well, it was that very day that Uri Geller learned that the Romanji for Kadabra is Yunguri, a corruption of Uri Geller. Yungira. With a name like that, it being psychic type, and the fact it had a metal spoon was reason enough for Uri Geller to be suspicious of his character being used without say. Could it be that a Pokemon was based off a real life person, or was it just a name that was a respectable nod to a well-known mystic? Let's take a quick look at Abra's evolutionary line to investigate further. English viewers will readily see the line's name as Abra, Kadabra, Alakazam, as a buildup to a magic trick or spell. Alakazam! If we compare this to its Japanese names, there is much more depth. In fact, most if not all Pokemon names in Japanese have more significance than the English counterparts. Abra in Japanese is Casey, Casey, which is in reference to Edgar Casey, a famous American clairvoyant in the early 1900s. Kadabra is Yungera, a corruption of Uri Geller. And finally, Alakazam is Houdin, a reference to Houdini, who is arguably one of the most well-known illusionists slash debunkers of his time. It seems that Uri Geller was not singled out in this, however, is the only living person to be able to say anything for or against this in this evolutionary line. There are other instances of names being used in the Pokemon franchise from Generation 1 onward, a well-known example being Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan. His Japanese name is Ebiwara, Ebiwara, which is in reference to Hiroyuki Ibihara, a Japanese world champion boxer from Tokyo. And of course, in English, it is Hitmonchan, which is in reference to Jackie Chan. Knowing that Pokemon has a history of giving names to those they admire as historical figures, what's the beef with Mr. Geller? Uri Geller took up a lawsuit against Nintendo claiming a violation of copyright of him, stating, I'm very angry about this. I wouldn't have given permission for an aggressive and, in one case, evil character to be based on me. This is not even anything to do with the old question of whether I'm a magician or a real psychic. It's straight theft of my persona. 
In his initial claim, Geller demanded that the Japanese company stop using Kadabra as a character on his phenomenally successful Pokemon cards. Uri Geller launched a lawsuit against Nintendo in November of 2000 worth 60 million pounds, stating, they can't just make money out of my name and image and try to get away with it changing the name of the card outside of Japan. I've already had several emails from people asking if it is really me on the card and saying how I must have been given a fortune by Nintendo for using my name. Geller has not received any royalties to this day. In an interview with BBC News in November 2000, Geller said, Nintendo turned me into an evil occult Pokemon character. Nintendo stole my identity by using my name and my signature image. This, of course, is referring to the character in question having a bent spoon. His assertions of why the character was evil and occult is identified and exemplified by the star on the character's forehead and the lightning bolts on his chest. The legal action claim against Pokemon asserted that the lightning bolts on his chest are in reference to the Nazi double S during World War II. This of course is not the first time Pokemon has been in controversy over Nazi quote unquote propaganda, or imagery as seen here in what looks like a Nazi salute. And of course, this Japanese trading card where a left-facing swastika is seen on the card Koga's Ninja Trick, which was altered outside of Japan. <laughs> Geller, in the BBC News interview in November 2000, proclaimed, I want to tell the world that I have nothing whatsoever to do with these violent creatures. And fair enough, he certainly, by the sounds of it, did not have any say in the matter. So far, what do you folks think? Does Geller have grounds to stand on? Does this character personify him? It may be hard for younger viewers to understand exactly where Geller is coming from without knowing his history first. According to The Guardian, a UK news source from December 29th, 1999, Geller had quite the interesting history, stating, he started bending spoons at the age of three. Another source from the BBC News states, he was born in 1946 and claims that when four years old, he had a mysterious encounter with a sphere of light while in the garden near his house in Israel. He first became aware of his unusual powers when he was five. He claims that during a meal, his spoon curled up in his hand and broke, although he had applied no physical pressure to it. Mr. Geller, if you are watching this, feel free to step in and clarify the timeline or anything here that is amok. Not amok, but wrong. Geller is most famous for his psychokinesis ability, and it is to no surprise that Kadabra, the Pokemon in question, has a signature move of kinesis. Back in the 1970s, when someone thought of telepathy, psychokinesis, or any form of ESP, Geller's name was readily brought to mind. Geller is well known for his ability to manipulate metal spoons, with what he claims to be power of his mind. It should also be noted that in Japanese, the move Kinesis directly translates to spoon bend. Even the animations for it beyond Generation 1 all clearly having a spoon being manipulated without physical force. It should also be noted that Kadabra's evolutionary line are all in the human-like egg group, or in Japanese, the human-shaped group. So then the question remains, as if Game Freak infringed copyright by unlawfully, without permission, using the likeliness of Geller. Or was Game Freak merely showing homage to what they view as someone of greatness, like with other Pokemon and their names? The court case was thrown out in the sense that no money has been awarded to this day, however, these incidents did not come without precautionary change. Change that has taken place that has not been undone since, so let's take a look. First, the trading card game. Pokemon anime director and storyboard artist Matsumitsu Hidaka confirmed in an interview that Kadabra would no longer be used on Pokemon trading cards until an agreement was reached on the case. As of 2019, the agreement has not been reached, and the last Kadabra card released was in the Sky Ridge e-reader set in 2002-2003. Viewers may be wondering then how could one use Alakazam without Kadabra? Ingeniously, the trading card game came up with a way around using Kadabra. An Abra card was released that is able to evolve directly into Alakazam, bypassing any potential issues of making more Kadabra cards. The anime was also affected. Although no removal of episodes have been implemented or banned thus far, since 2006, Kadabra has been massively excluded from the anime, with the exception of a small cameo in the world of Pokemon from this title. 
Also noticeable is Kadabra's exclusion from Pokemon Rangers Shadow of Elmaya, where Abra and Alakazam are in the game, however Kadabra is not. At this point, I'm quite confident that Kadabra and Porygon are good friends. Nintendo has been tight-lipped about these allegations and have not released press on the issue. Perhaps when everything is settled, we will get more information. However, at this point, there is no official word of whether Pokemon accepts or denies the claim that they directly pulled Geller's persona into creating Kadabra. They are holding their cards tight to their chest. Since the initial claim, there is no new news on the matter. However, in 2016, Geller took to social media to gather people's opinions. First with this tweet, which several days later led to this Facebook post saying, if you can read Hebrew, Kadabra has been named Uri Geller. So my question is, do you think Kadabra is based on me or not? It's been very interesting to read people's opinions on the matter going through the comments section. However, I now pose it to you folks. Now that you, my loyal viewers, have the facts, what do you think? Is Kadabra indeed based off of Uri Geller? Or is this just a tip of the hat to show respect for being an expert in his field? I would love to hear your comments below, and if you have any additional evidence, I would love to read it. This has been Eric of Bubble Tube, signing out.